Chapter 6 The Thief Who Does Not Steal What are you thinking? The deep baritone voice of a man whispered close to Vasan's ear, followed by a touch from his lips on the back of Vasan's neck with a warm breath. His long, slender hands moved to hug Vasan from behind and caressed the skin underneath Vasan's t-shirt. The t-shirt was pulled up, revealing his abdomen and his chest. He could sense the firm touch on his erogenous zone. Vasan closed his eyes, sending a humming sound from his throat. Right now, they were using a room in the same hotel to spend their time together at night again. Vasan, who was sitting absentmindedly on a chair near the window, was distracted by Gunn's arousing touch. You have no need to know other people's thoughts, but I want to know yours. Gunn still continued moving with his hands. Whatever thoughts in Vasan's head began to get mixed up like a river getting muddy. You have something you want to tell me. Gunn? Vasan caught the naughty hands and held them still before he was going to forget what he wanted to say. As a doctor, what do you think is the reason that a lot of critically ill patients died in the same period of time? Gunn backed away from Vasan, walking to sit on the edge of the bed. It could be several reasons. Some types of disease could be predicted. If the patients got sick during the same period, they might likewise die just about the same time. Gunn pondered. What else? The weather might also affect the patients with lung cancer or emphysema, or it could be other environmental factors such as pollution in the soil, the water, and the air that makes sick people die. Vasan crossed his leg, intertwining his hands on his lap while looking at Gunn with an expression that was difficult to read. What if it happened in our area? How would you explain it? Gunn smiled. At present, there's many things that science couldn't explain. There is no 100% certainty in medical practice. This is what I've been taught. If you try to get an answer from a doctor, what you're going to get is maybe, might, or expect. It depends on how much research has been done on the topic being asked. You didn't really answer my question. Vasan pointed out, looking irritated. I just wanted your opinion. There is no right or wrong. This was what we discussed in private. There is no need to cite tons of evidence. I might try to collect the research data to find the factors related to the increasing death rate. It might take a while until I find the best answer. Gunn got to his feet after he finished talking. He then took his shirt off, revealing a muscular upper body. He approached Vasan like a lion approaching his prey. The answer that Vasan wanted was still up in the air. He was distracted by another man's pampering touch. Vasan pushed his doubts aside and followed through the reason why they were in the same room now. Gunn pulled Vasan up and pushed him against the window before bending down to kiss him devouringly. Five minutes later, they were lying in bed, naked. Their clothes were left on the floor beside the bed. Stick to what we agree, Vasan ordered with a resolute voice. Will you handcuff me if I don't follow your order? You can try if you want to know what will happen next. But I have condoms today. Vasan squeezed a chin of the man on top of him. Not in a million years, Gunn chuckled. A million years isn't that far away. He grabbed the hand on his chin and pinned it onto the bed, then leaned down to kiss the man lying beneath him. Vasan closed his eyes, accepting pleasure from the other man. Gunn's lips moved from Vasan's mouth to his chin, his neck, his chest, and continued moving downward. I'm really sorry, Captain. I'm handling an assault case at the bar, and I also have to investigate a deadly car crash at another place. It's quite far. Vassan sighed when he heard noise in the background while the lieutenant spoke. Today seems like a busy day. It's okay. I can go myself. The crime scene isn't far from our office, anyway. 
Thank you, Captain Vasson. Police Lieutenant Amnart, a duty officer who stayed on the night shift with Vasson, hung up the phone. Vasan slid his chair away from the desk full of the unfinished case files, snatching his police uniform jacket from the hangar behind him to wear over his crew shirt. He had just received a report from a patrol officer that there was a home invasion. The neighbor was the one who saw a figure trying to force open the window and climb inside. The patrol officers said that they didn't find the intruder when they arrived at the scene but they found the evidence of attempted break-in. Since the other investigators were busy solving their own case and the crime scene wasn't far from the police station, Captain Vassan decided to go there himself. He took out the phone to check the time. It was 9.20 p.m. He also hoped to see Gunn's line messages on the screen, but he hadn't contacted him for several hours now. Vasan didn't think of anything more than Gunn must have taken a nap or been busy somewhere. Thinking of Gunn, his thoughts also wandered to what had happened last night. The touch from the younger man was still lingering on his skin. Vasan admitted that he liked it and longed for the sensual temptation. If Gunn was to invite him to spend time together again at night, he wouldn't refuse. There was always a magnetic force pulling them together. It was an infatuation that he couldn't comprehend where it came from. However, that still wasn't enough for him to give his heart to Gunn. Vasan needed more time to get to know the mysterious man. Vasan casted off his doubt about what Gunn was doing and kept his phone in his pocket before hurriedly left his office. The fact that the crime scene was located near the police station allowed Wasson to reach there in 10 minutes. The first thing he saw was one of the patrol officers run towards him with a panic expression. Yes? Wasson had a bad feeling after seeing that expression. The person in the house doesn't look so good. I just called the ambulance. Doesn't look so good? Wasson furrowed his brows. You mean there's a person in that house that was broken into? Yes, sir. When I arrived, I didn't see the intruder. The daughter of the house owner didn't even know someone had broken in her house through the window. When she invited me in, I saw the patient on his bed. At first, he's just sleeping, but after I inspected the signs of breaking in and talked to his daughter for a while, he began to have trouble breathing. Do you want to take a look inside? Vasan rushed into the house. The first thing he heard was a veiling sound. When he walked through a door and entered another room, he saw that the woman holding an extremely skinny old man who was having a breathing difficulties on the bed. There was a nasal cannula connected between his nose and an oxygen cylinder. The woman cried harder when she saw Vasan entering the room, momentarily forgetting that her house had been intruded. The police already called the ambulance. Don't be scared. Vasan consoled the woman in a local dialect, then rushed to look at the patient on the bed. What's wrong with your pa? Cancer, she answered with a tearful face. A final stage lung cancer. A final stage. This word made Vasan go numb from his head to his toes as if someone splashed icy water on him. He turned stiff like a stone, so still that the woman began to wonder if he was fine. He was a cop who had been highly trained. He had a strong body and mind. Never once had he been so astounded that he didn't know what to do. The stertorous sound from the patient's throat brought Vasan back to his sense. It didn't matter whether this case was another mystery. The man before him needed help right now. Pa! Pa! The woman screamed when the old man's limbs started to stretch out and jerk uncontrollably. Vasan had some basic resuscitation from training a long time ago so he decided to flip the patient to lie on his side to prevent mucus from getting to his lungs. However, further treatment was beyond Vasan's knowledge. 
While they were waiting for the ambulance, he decided that he should call someone with the knowledge to see if he could do something else for the patient. Vassan moved from the bed and pulled out his phone to call Dr. Guntapad right away. He and Gunn were close enough that he didn't have to be very considerate. Vassan was positive that Gunn wouldn't mind helping him during the middle of the night. A long period of listening to the ringtone made Vassan's heart sink. He pressed the call button again after the signal was gone. The result was the same. Gunn didn't pick up his call. The patrol officer held the old man still. He looked around, unable to do anything. No different from Wasan. What should we do? Should we insert something into his mouth? Don't. <laughs> Wasan made a sound of irritation because the person he called didn't pick up his phone in this critical moment. He knew Gunn wasn't on an out-of-hours duty tonight. Well, they needed to talk when he got back to him. When will the ambulance arrive? Another half minute had passed. The older man's body began to seize, tense up. The patient's face was awfully pale. His lips began to turn blue. Captain, Grandpa's seizures have stopped and now he isn't breathing. Shit. Vassan cursed, putting his phone back to his pocket. Do the CPR. Do it. Now. Vassan didn't know if the home intrusion without stealing was related with the death of Chart Kai. The lung cancer patient who had a seizure stopped breathing and died in the ICU at the hospital. What he could do was to recommend an autopsy, which the deceased daughter decided to do so because she wanted to find out the real cause of death. If they couldn't find any evidence that indicated other causes of death, except for dying from the illness, then Vassan could turn his attention to other directions. However, it was obvious that now Vassan got involved in too many terminal patient cases. It was too much to be just a coincidence. After he registered the corpse with the hospital to wait for the autopsy from a forensic pathologist, Vassan traveled back to the police station at 2 a.m., feeling exhausted. Fortunately, no other reports came in to double his weariness. For a moment, he looked at the pile of case files that might take a million years to finish with a blank expression, before deciding that he wouldn't take a nap tonight. The dawn would come in a couple of hours. Vassan had to go to the court at daybreak, followed by two interrogations. Taking a nap would make him even more sleepy. So he might just drop by his house around 5 a.m. to take a bath. Vassan always asked himself why he had to be in a division that must do everything from soup to nuts. When everyone else escaped from this type of work. He also had to command a deeper legal knowledge than the other officers. But since he was going to be a detective inspector anytime soon... There was no reason for him to give up just yet. I dropped the phone in a void inside my sofa. I was completely unaware of this. The sound was turned off. I didn't hear the vibration. Gunn hugged Vassan tightly from behind while trying to explain what had happened. Also, I dozed off at around 9pm and got up at dawn. I didn't really know you called. I didn't mean to ignore your call. Please don't be mad, babe. It's nothing serious. It's just that if you'd picked up the phone, the patient might have survived. Vassan walked away from the embrace. He took off his t-shirt to take a shower. He knew that, even though if Gunn had picked up his call, the chance that the patient would survive might not have increased that much anyway. However, he couldn't help pretending to be mad to make the man feel guilty that he had dared not to pick up his phone. Do you want to find something to eat? It's on me. I don't eat supper. Vassan saw Gunn's gaze roaming his symmetrically sculpted upper body with satisfaction. If you're hungry, then go by yourself. How can I make you stop being angry? Help me analyze the recent incident and I will. I won't take your vague answers like last time. All right. Gunn approached him and held Vassan's hand loosely. I think that there are two possibilities. One, he died from a natural cause. Two, 
he died from an unnatural cause. What do you mean? Gunn's expression changed. His dark brown eyes looked so mysterious and possessed some sort of attraction that made Vassan go silent as if he was enchanted. Dying from the unnatural cause could mean that someone had intentionally ended the terminal patient's life. There was an awkward silence for a moment. This was what Vassan had always been thinking, but he didn't dare to speak it out. If it really went that way, it'd be entirely another story. You can wait for an autopsy report from the latest case. If you find some evidence that might suggest this to be a murder case, it might be enough to think about this theory. If you still can't find anything, all you can do is keep this doubt to yourself and gather further evidence. Let's say you're the one who did it. What would you do? I never thought about that because I'd never do such a thing. Vassan didn't seem to like this answer. As a person who has medical knowledge, you must have some idea. Imagine that you got to do it for some reasons. How would you do it? Gunn thought for a moment. I might try to overdose the patient. Most of these patients would be given the morphine to ease the pain. Receiving morphine overdose might result in respiratory depression. Other way is to inject them with some medicine that make them fall asleep until they stop breathing, such as a sedative or give them potassium, which will result in arrhythmia. That means the one who could do it must be a medical practitioner. It could be anyone who know how to inject through blue veins, or the one who could order overdose morphine, which is easy to track down from the previous records. Gunn walked to the window, looking at the night view outside. The hotel they were staying at was in the heart of the town, so there were some lights from the streets, although there weren't a lot of cars running on the road at this time. It's hard to disguise the case as a natural death, though. If it's me, no matter how much I wanted my patients to pass away peacefully, I couldn't do it. Even though most cases wouldn't go through an autopsy because the family members of the deceased thought that they died from the illness, I wouldn't take such a risk. I hope that's true. Vassan prayed silently. He hoped this strange story had nothing to do with Gunn, so that he would spend this time with this man peacefully. At least this time it wasn't Dr. Guntabat's regular patient. Vassan felt more relieved by this. All they had to do was wait for Dr. Bunnikit's autopsy report, which could confirm whether there was nothing other than a natural death from the terminal stage cancer. However, all these didn't answer why he got involved with so many cases like this.